Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be showing you my entire David Eddings book collection. These are books that I've been collecting ever since I was probably 13 or 14 years old. I mean, a long time long time and some of these are the original copies that i bought way back when in fact everything every eddings book i bought i bought right when it came out so let's get to it let's start with just how awesome david eddings is anyway i mean david eddings in the 80s was the big massive superstar fantasy writer along with Raymond Feist and Terry Brooks and probably Dragonlance. Those were probably the main ones that were just selling like crazy. And, you know, I was a fan of all of the ones that I've mentioned and especially David Eddings' Belgariad series holds a absolutely special place in my heart as one of the um, great, great, great fantasy series of all time. And so let's start talking with the very first book that I ever bought of David Eddings. I bought it at um, the Safeway Supermarket in Richfield, Utah, in Sevier County, Utah, just when I was a young kid. I liked the cover. One thing I have to say about this original five-book series is the... Del Rey Books, who put them out, made them all look super spectacular. They all match on the shelf. They all look good together on the shelf as a series. And when we turn the spines around and look at them, all the spines fit. But Pot of Prophecy was the first one I bought. I read it and I loved it. It immediately launched itself into... One of my favorite series of all time, especially as a kid. It's still, like I said, ranks as one of my favorite series of all time. It's just a great coming-of-age story, a great adventure story. And believe it or not, David Eddings, to this day, still is one of the greatest wordsmiths and fantasy writers that I've ever read. The word choices, the sentence structure, the way he describes things, the way he tells the story... The word choices he uses are absolutely just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful writing and wonderful storytelling. And the covers are really, really cool. Queen of Sorcery was book number two. Magician's Gambit was book number three. Castle of Wizardry was book number four, probably my favorite cover of the group. And then Enchanter's Endgame was book number five. If you want to watch my very detailed reviews of Pawn of Prophecy and Queen of Sorcery, all you need to do is type in my last name, Durfee. Uh, it's kind of out of... Anyway, and then the name of the book and the reviews will come up. And you can see exactly what I thought in detail of the first two books. But then look at how the spines all match. They look just great on the shelf. Now then he wrote his follow-up five books. These were called the Malorian series. Um, they also look... I don't know if I like the covers as well as these up here. But they at least all still match. They at least all look good together on the shelf. But this was his follow-up. You know, he had that five-book um, series, the Belgariad. Then he did the Malorian, which includes all the same characters from the Belgariad, all the characters we love from the Belgariad. Follow us through to the Malorian. But we've got Guardians of the West... And these came out in the late 80s. I'd say these came out in the early 80s. These came out in the late 80s. And um, just huge, big-time, best-selling books. New York Times bestsellers. Guardians of the West. 
King of the Murgos. Demon Lord of Karanda. The Sorceress of Darshiva. You know, one of the things that I don't like about these covers as much as the original five books is it's just a weird, there's, there's like a weird 1980s sort of poorly done Photoshop quality to them. <clears throat> and then the Cirrus of Kale, the real, the awkward Photoshopness really shines through greatly on this one. With the weird eyes on horses and lances. Back when Photoshop was just getting its start, people. A lot of graphic designers were using it. And I think that it was bad. Um, I will be rereading all of these and leaving reviews eventually. But the spines, for the most part, match. Book number one, they did like this. And then they f decided, uh, yeah, yeah, let's change it up for their other. And so it's just a little mismatched on the shelf. And then David Eddings wrote in another whole new fantasy world called the um, Elenium. He did a trilogy called the Elenium. Now let's look at these books. These books are weird because it's they're all about the same knight. He's like an adventuring knight. We got the Elenium trilogy and the Tamuli trilogy. So if we look at the Elenium trilogy... It's those three books. They all kind of look similar, but we're going to go over these. These came out in the early 1990s, and they had, each one of them had a great Keith Parkinson painting on the front when they came out in hardcover. Now, I never did buy them in hardcover. I just ended up buying the mass market paperbacks to match the rest of my... I mean, they came out with these... Full-scale, great Keith Parkinson paintings. This is what the hardcovers looked like. But then, for some reason, when they did the uh, the packaging of the paperbacks, they, they cut the bottom half of the illustration. The illustration was this beautiful illustration that went clear down here. And uh, they just chopped it off. They chopped the illustrations in half. For whatever fucking reason, I don't understand why they did that for this first trilogy when they released them in paperback. Now, they look like they go together. The spines are pretty good. I mean, they're pretty similar. Um, but I don't know why they chopped off these great um, Keith Parkinson. Because on the very final book, in book six... They left the illustration as a full illustration, which makes no sense. But anyway, the Elenium, the Diamond Throne. These are great books too. I love these books, and we're gonna reread. We're gonna read them and uh, talk about them each individually on the channel eventually. The Ruby Throne, the Sapphire Rose, and then we get into the Tamuli trilogy about our same adventuring knight. And we get a uh, Daryl K. Sweet cover here, Domes of Fire. And then we get um, the Shining Ones, which gives us a slightly bigger il cover illustration. That's a Keith Parkinson. And then the very final book of the six books, they decided to do the cover full size. I don't understand why they didn't do them all full size. And again, the uh, spines look dope. And then the last two books of my collection are Palgera the Sorceress, again, with a great Keith Parkinson painting on it, and Belgarath the Sorcerer, which tie into these ten books up here. It's kind of a little duology there, sort of a prequel duology to all the stuff that goes on in there. And those are great books, too. Now, I do know that David Eddings wrote probably a half a dozen other novels. I don't own them. I don't own them. I don't know why I never bought them. I just never did. Uh, so sue me. I've got three quarters of his collection here. Not all of it. Some of you probably have the others, and I can't remember the names of those other couple series that he wrote. But anyway, I ain't got them. I ain't got them. 
I just thought I'd share what I have. I love David Eddings. Everybody who's a fantasy fan should at least read these first original five books he wrote. 